So, kind of looking at the whole season, the entire 10 episodes, as a roundup. One word, one simple word, mediocre. That's basically how you can sum up this season, just mostly mediocre. There were a few episodes that had some nice moments, but at the end of the day, nobody's going to really remember this season, with the possible exception of the episode Rosa. But, you know, to be honest, if you asked me, you know, what happened in particular episodes, uh, if you gave me a title at this point, I probably wouldn't remember exactly what happened inside of it. Um, if you said, yeah, what about that one where they, uh, you know, they found a mirror dimension? I go, oh, yeah, I remember that. They did that this season. Um, but when I walk away from this, you know, next month, I'm not going to be sitting down to go, wow, that was amazing. Most of the time with Doctor Who, previously, they have done something, you know, where they've had an arc for an entire season that wraps up in the last couple of episodes where you do kind of walk away feeling, wow, you know, the first season, you know, the parting of the ways. You walked away going, wow, uh, you know, um, the last of the Time Lords. I mean, that's when you remember. You walk away going, wow, you know, and... Um, there just usually are. This is not one. There's no, there's no walking away from the season going, wow, that was amazing. It was just, mm, it's okay, it's mediocre. And the problem, as I've been saying all through my reviews, is this fault lies with one man, Chris Chibnall. And that's because he's missing, as I've been saying the entire season, he has, you need a good kind of character development for all of your characters and three is too many you can't get character development and i'm not sure he's even trying very hard you know the doctor in particular we don't have any character development with this doctor at all there is no character development my my fear honestly i haven't really seen what i'd call social justice warrior stuff in here but my fear is and he just went well it's a woman we can show how a woman reacts to all this stuff and we don't have to give her character development but then again, nobody else has any character development, really. Ryan and Graham have a little. But again, that was totally predictable to me right from the beginning. I think I said it on the first episode. Eventually, we're going to get to a point where, you know, Ryan calls, you know, Graham granddad, and they think about each other's family. Predictable, you knew, predictable. Yaz, of course, we still know almost nothing about her. I mean, think about it. As a character, we actually know more about her mother than we, I'm sorry, her grandmother than we do her because of that one episode where they went back in time. We actually know more about her grandmother. All she really has done so far, all this season, is just react to what goes on around her and is occasionally sent out to find out some information, usually with somebody else. Uh, and we don't know that much about her character. You know, she's a police constable, right? You would think, like a police constable, especially one like she says in the beginning, the first episode where she wants to go out and do more interesting things than just, you know, doing the occasional thing with, you know, people who have smashed cars. You would think that this person, type of person would want to be doing things more aggressively, you know, be inclined to more put herself in harm's way when it comes around. You know, like this episode when the doctor's got a gun pointed at her. Maybe she should come forward and use some of her skills as a police uh, constable and say, hold on, hold on, don't shoot anybody. You know, maybe get in front of the doctor, for that matter. She's a cop. <laughs> you would think she'd do this more like a cop, and, and she doesn't. There's just no character development here. You need, as I said over and over, a season-long arc. Something where you have one episode that answers, asks some questions, then the next episode maybe answers some of those questions while asking a few more, next episode, etc. And you finally build up to a big, big climax in the last two or so episodes. That's how Doctor Who has done things since 2005. It has worked very successfully, and it has not here. This episode has a pretense of being a series long arc, but it's not really. It really isn't. If anything, it's just a bookend. You know, you have this alien come up at the beginning, you have him come up at the end, this is a bookend. It is not connected anywhere in between. A real series-long arc has the Doctor bumping into pieces and parts of this puzzle, this arc, all the way throughout the season. None of that here. It's just a bookend. We get the bad guy alien at the beginning, we see him at the end. It's just a bookend. And again, here, the bad guy alien could have been anyone. 
Um, Sin Sha is really here. His only real um, thing is to provide character development for Graham. But again, as a fan die master, you go, I, you know he's not going to kill him. You just know. You know, his performance is, you know, Bradley Walsh's performance is good enough that had it been any other show, had it been not Doctor Who, uh, you could have sort of thought maybe he will kill him. But because it's Doctor Who and because the Doctor doesn't allow her companions to do that kind of thing, uh, you know, you just knew he wasn't going to kill Shinsha. And again, this is all on Chris Chibno. The things I like that he's done and the things that I think are keeping viewers more around is because, you know, the Gvaldi era, sadly, went very, very dark. And that doesn't work on Doctor Who. If you look back at the class, classic series, when did it get uh, canceled? When John Nathan Turner took it too dark. I think they should have a nice big banner in the, in the writer's room that says, when you make the Doctor too dark... People stop watching. Um, so the fact that he's got an lighter doctor, the fact that he's got a faster pace is a good thing, but he's missing this big picture. Continue to say it. I do not think that he's the right person to be a showrunner or head writer for this show. I think the BBC needs to let him go right now. Unfortunately, I know that he's up for another season. So we're going to have to live through hopefully not another season of just mediocre scripts, but I suspect it will be. And I think the show needs somebody like, not Stephen Moffat, because he jumped the shark already. Somebody like Stephen Moffat before he jumped the shark after the day of the Doctor. Chibnall just isn't that good. A lot of times, under the last two showrunners, this show has kept me guessing from time to time, which is hard to do, because I am a fan die master, and that means I've seen everything. So keeping me guessing is tough. I'm the guy you should be aiming at, frankly. If you're writing science fiction, I'm the guy you should be aiming at. You should be trying to keep me guessing. If you can keep me guessing, probably everybody else is going to keep being keep, kept guessing. But no, not here, not the whole season. It's just mediocre and generally predictable. That's, that's what I have to say about the season as a whole, as a roundup. Mediocre and kind of predictable. <laughs> Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.